Welcome back to my review series of City of Blank. Today we're reviewing episode 160, 161 and 162. Today we're reviewing episode 160, Sacrifice. Fan art, let's go. So the episode starts off with Liz telling everyone about her plan and with Shnee just laying on her lap because everybody loves Shnee, he's adorable. If you don't think that, then you are bad and mad. And we see Finn's state him that even though that, that it's pr a good plan, it doesn't seem worth it if it if the risk outweighs the reward. And we can see Desmond agreeing with him. But since only Liz can do it, we don't really know. And she starts foreshadowing like what I've done to blanks, I need to do this. And Finn states that Father and Kingly are gonna be fierce if we go with Go, uh, if we go through with this and that they may even go after their loved ones, not a problem for, for me. Well, my loved ones are already out of their reach. And yeah, I guess that's true. Or in this room. And yeah, that is technically true. And all of his aunt. So he needs to go take care of his sister before Lewis catches wind of any of this. Where do you intend to take her? I don't think anyone's home associated with Ben is safe anymore. And there is one place in the world who's house can be go keep who his sister can go to and I uh, yep Desmond don't forget Desmond can't walk around with a mask anymore and this is what Desmond looks like so that's pretty cool and if do they know and uh, Aunt Laurio has had to take in so many blanks in the past 48 hours and yep she runs Masquerade uh, which is another Bland Corp refugee system. And even though it's not as well known as Bland Corp, it's still pretty good. So there are lots of blanks going to be shipped on Prison Island because of Dustman, apparently. And that's this when Rosie sticks up for her, his big brother. If you're going to accuse someone of something, you should hear the story first. And yep, Aunt Laura's met her match, so... That's fine, I guess. So, yep, uh, it's not really Desmond's fault, really. And after all, Rex wouldn't have thought so highly of you if you had if you had really been a willing part of any of this. And <laughs> who's Rex? Like, that's pretty funny. I'm willing, I refuse to remain a pawn in the horrible scheme. Which is, yep, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Who would want to be in a horrible scheme? That's when we need to refugee her kind of thing. Uh, and no, she's completely human, which is, yep, we already knew that, but she's in trouble with her blank brother, Desmond. Of course I'll watch her. Besides, I feel like this is the least I can do after, after everything my godson has put me through. Yep, and Aunt Laura and Drex are god mother and god son. Hope you aren't blaming yourself in any way after everything that's happened. I've, I've done nothing... I ha I've never done anything wrong with that stupid grip in his life. I had nothing to do with any of this. Actually, she's probably the most innocent person in this whole thing. We still don't know why Aunt Laura and Rex hate each other so much. Or, ha like, pretend to hate each other. Like, they never... She never... 66 has never actually explained that. And the press, press conference has now been settled. Entire city should be in should see an announcement tomorrow, including her. Uh, we don't know who her is until we go to the next episode. So, yep, that episode was pretty good. It only took four seasons. And, yep, that was really, really good. So, this episode's rating is a 7 out of 10. So now we're up to episode 161. Certain Feelings. Uh, fan art. Uh, let's go. So the episode starts out with Rex just sitting in this room with a bunch of orange, but he likes purple. Why Why do you have so much orange, man? And we see Belle uh, apparently in here. So we're just wondering if she can sleep with him tonight. And that's when Belle makes a move on Rex, but Rex is too dense in here. Why are you so dense, man? To even notice that he's that he's getting hit on. And he... And... 
I'm sorry, Phil. I've never thought of you in that context. Can't really blame you. No, wait. Uh, I don't really think about anyone in that manner because, well, Rex is a half blank and he's never actually seen anyone. And he, even though he knows what kind of feelings he's supposed to get, he's never actually had that form of desire, which if you know, you know. And if he, and maybe he'd get them once I started to like someone like Makar. And yes, it's awkward having those memories of my brother. But now I really, really like someone, and I still don't get those desires. So yeah, Rex doesn't have certain desires that other people may have. Which is, you know, kind of fair. It's never even crossed his mind. And you know what, I really like this, because these two are really cute together. And, uh, yeah, these two are really cute. But... Uh, I mean, they got together, which I'm pretty happy about. Yep, we see breaking news. And this is when Nia ambushes them. Oh, hello there. I see there's more breaking news this morning than what's on TV. But I just didn't feel comfortable sleeping alone with Charlie up there. Yeah, I, I do really like this scene. Or panel, sorry. Never. There'll be time for me to be nosy about this later. Come on up. And today is the dawn of... A bleak day in our city's history as blanks around the city are forced out to discriminate or are forced to discrimination. And yep, Rex is listening Desmond and wondering what the hell is going on. And I can no longer view Ben as the safe haven for blanks I intended it to be. My father has turned my organization into nothing but a fire to force the foxes out of their hole so the hunters may catch them. Shame for, shame for what my father has turned Ben into doesn't even begin to describe it. So henceforth, I will no longer associate with Ben and will be stepping down as its president. So, yep, that's nice. Finn's is no longer going to be in Ben, which is pretty good, I guess. Because now, he's not going to have to force himself. And I'm ending affiliation with Ben does not mean I intend to end my fight to make this place better for blanks. But on where once a blank once took a portion on my face. Well you still don't know how that happened. But that blank was sentenced to a short life and incomplete. And back then I did what I thought was best for him. It's too late for me to do the right thing I did to my own blank. But it's not too late for Liz to do the right thing to her. And this is when Liz steps up and say I will be making a symbolic dress in my brother's place. The blank who has part of my face is still in the city. And I, Elizabeth Martirella, offer her the rest of my face, which is wild, because she's admitting like she's gonna off oof herself, basically. But you know what? Eight out of ten for this episode. This episode was really good. And now episode one sixty two, ref, fan art. So the episode starts off with that, and that's when Cloud, uh. Says they're still going. Yep, because why not? We are performing this symbolic gesture to show our commitment to the blank community, and hopefully, so yeah. This is all politics. I don't, I don't understand a word of these politics. Like who under? I don't even think politicians understand politics because that's how confusing they are. Please, someone teach me about politics because you know what? This is stupid. Stupid. Uh, I, Desmond Gray, will be stepping down as vice president of Ben in full support of Gabriel Finns. So, yep, that's, that's happening. Our city will no longer spend millions keeping the overpopulated Dusk Island prison inhabited with innocent blanks. And yep, that's a big hit on Nia because her mum is wrongfully in prison there. And that's when if we just keep on scrolling. Uh, yep, everyone knows what's going to happen. And that's when Jericho decides to open his big fat mouth. What a load of BS. Uh, insane if we think we didn't get anything out of it except with now one red blank. Because red blanks can never, can't actually be used if a blank is actually complete. So, yep, that, yeah, don't forget that important detail. We be a man down, they lose nothing. She's going to lose her face so Belle can have a whole... How are either of those nothing? And yep, in exchange for a face, Belle's going to lose her red blank powers. 
big freaking deal. They talk like she's making some huge sacrifice, but in the end, they're just going to have medics on standby to make the whole thing as clean as possible. And the next day, she'll get reconstructed surgery so that it'll be like this whole thing never happened. Except Belle would have a face now. How can you keep glossing over that fact? And yep, this is when brothers get into a fight, like all brothers do. And what would be so bad about that? It's clear that everything that's happened wasn't his or Desmond's doing. Oi, what are you... Just what are they promising that you are so against? A future where humans are still in charge of our fates. Because yep, Jericho will never forgive humans for what he did. And, but don't worry, we'll be able to... No, why in the next couple episodes? Because this guy really hates humans. A future where something as simple as breaking a promise could spell our end. Where humans could, where humans still remain the dominant species and we remain the lesser things that cause us below them. Lesser things that they can continue to discriminate against, experiment on, and kill. Just like they did to Kali. And yep, we see, we hear, hear about this girl, Kali. But, who is this Callie girl? Who, like, what does she have to do with any of this? It's about Belle, and a human who wants to do the right thing to make amends the best way she can. It seems two of them can see other iron matter. And that's when a self appointed yes man and serial killer step up to the plate and say, I'm gonna take your side, evil mastermind. That's when Nia goes on Belle's side. I get your point, but that guy is offering to release my mum. That's the entire reason I'm here in the first place. So let me get this straight. Uh, the only people on your side are, are a yes man and a serial killer. Which side really really sounds like the right one? And what side the rest of you on? Oh, you mean my Psycon? It's on Bells. We both are. And that's when we get Angel Halo over Rex's head. Whoopee! And yeah, we just see the best option out of everyone. And just vote for the dog for mayor. And, yep, that'll be all reviews. 10 out of 10 episodes, because this episode was great. Anyways, see ya.